Hello, everyone. There has been huge, huge news for SpaceX uh, today, and it means that they will have a global 5G phone in the next few years. You will have global 5G service, 2 gigabits per second speed to your phones starting in about uh, next year. What has happened is that they have bought EchoStar's bandwidth for um, communication spectrum to communicate directly to your cell phone. Uh, for 50 megahertz bandwidth. This is five times more width of bandwidth than um, they were getting from T-Mobile. So let's uh, go over all of these huge, huge developments. So first is um, that SpaceX has launched dummy version three satellites for Starlink in their last uh, test. They're using the larger rocket, 10 times larger, than the Falcon 9 rocket they have launched over 400 times. And they practice dispensing those version three satellites out into space. So that was done the last test. So these version three satellites will be much, much bigger than the current of roughly 8,000 satellites that they have up there now, which are called version two minis. Um, we'll go over what all these different size satellites means and what the new bandwidth means and what the new FCC rulings uh, mean for SpaceX. Okay, so next is the, there's more bandwidth. So I'm trying to break this down. Before, and we, they still have access to 10 megahertz, think of it as width, every five megahertz is like a lane, right? They had a single lane going each way from T-Mobile and they had to have a deal, partnership with T-Mobile in order to get that bandwidth to communicate to your cell phones. Five megahertz going each way, right? Total of 10 megahertz. Now they have 50 megahertz, 10 lanes, five and five each way, or eight going one way, two going the other. You want to have more coming down, right? So you had one and one going each way. Now you could have combined 12 lanes of, of highway say 10 going down, 10 times more download speed, two times upload speed. Generally you want more download speed than upload speed. So that means just from that simple thing, you're getting 10 times more communication. If you say, I want to download faster than I upload. Okay, so huge gains that way. <clears throat> so by 2026, you could have 5G speeds from space to your cell phone with no dead zones. It'd be all over the planet. They'll probably launch 2,000 version 3 satellites, which again, they've done it in a test mode. This would be probably 10 times the speed and 10 times the capacity. So capacity being how many people could I have? Speed being, you know, 100 megabits per second or a gigabit per second, okay? By 2027, they'll get even more satellites up there, well, between five to 10 times more, I'm estimating 10,000 to 20,000. They're permitted to get up to about 40,000. Right. So then in a press release, they said they could get 20 times more speed when they have version three satellites up. They're using the new bandwidth they got. They lower the, the, the satellite um, orbit to get closer and get better signal and all that kind of stuff. Um, so 20 times more speed, 100 times more capacity. So before they were capped out at 100 million users. Now they can go to everyone on the planet. OK. So that is, is huge, right? Faster gigabit speeds everywhere on the planets, no dead zone. Okay, like I said, they deployed dummy satellites. So good enough, already good enough to do this. Um, when I say good enough to do this, they did it with the giant spaceship, but they didn't reuse, they didn't land the booster. Everyone says, you know, land the booster. They've done that three times, but they didn't do it that last time. And they also didn't save the upper stage. but they deployed the satellites. Every time you go up, everyone else does not reuse their full-size rockets. They always just deploy their, their cargo and then they burn up their rocket. Technically, um, rocket labs at a small upper stage they, or something, they, they recover some piece of their, of their rocket, but that's for a you know, thousand ki kilogram satellite. So way, way smaller, way, way smaller rockets than the SpaceX Falcon 9 or the uh, Starship. But uh, the next test launch, 
um, Starship Flight 11, which is Flight 10, and they can say, okay, let's go to orbit. For the first 10 times, they not going to orbit, kind of going almost to orbit, not going to orbit. Why? It was because they wanted to be extra safe, and in case they couldn't restart their engine to burn and deorbit after they get to orbit, they wanted to only go like 95% of the way there. 95%, it would automatically uh, come out of space, even if they couldn't restart the engine another time. Now that they've done a successful go to near orbit and then uh, fire the engine again to deorbit, they know, okay, this will work for us to get out of orbit. We can go to orbit. We have confidence we can light the engine again and deorbit. Uh, and again, doesn't have to land, right? Landing makes it cheaper and better, but they can start deploying version three satellites with this capability. I can launch, lose a rocket, don't care because I'm still lowest cost payload. They'd be the lowest cost payload even by recovering nothing. Cheaper than their own Falcon 9, half the cost of their own Falcon 9. Okay, and like I said, they've already, of their 10 tests of Starship, three times they have recovered their booster. It landed on the launch tower, okay? If they combine what they did in Flight 10, deploy payloads and do a deorbit, and they catch the booster, which they've done three times. Every time they, they tried to do it, they did it. Then that could get their cost down by five times, 20% of the cost, get down to $100 per kilogram. So that would be 10 times cheaper than the Falcon 9, which is already several times cheaper than anyone else. Okay. And then if they can catch the upper stage, probably it'll happen after about four test launches. They could try and do it earlier, but they want to be careful. Once they catch the upper stage, which they did a test landing in the ocean, soft landing in the ocean, then they will get another 10 times cheaper. They'll be 100 times cheaper to get to $10 per kilogram. Okay, But this is separate from the whole, just get the big satellites up there. They're fully capable of doing it. Just how cheap can they do it? How fast can they do it? So with the new bandwidth they have bought from EchoStar, and EchoStar's stock is, is running up because of the fact that they sold their bandwidth to SpaceX for a mix of half cash, half stock. So their $8.5 billion of SpaceX stock, people say, I love that, plus they got $8.5 billion in cash. We're driving your uh, share price up because you have a piece of this. You sold out and got a piece of what's going to be dominant communication. Um, 20 times the starting bandwidth, okay? Um, a separate note for those the communication Starlink can communicate to your cell phone and they can also communicate high speed internet to to dishes, these flat dishes that they have. Okay. And you can design for self-install, just easy to point, plug it in, point to the sky, plug it into to the power. <clears throat> Something that's gonna happen in 2026 is similar to what happened to the mobile side in 2025. March in 2025, the FCC said you can, uh, SpaceX, you can increase the power you're using on your highways to more power, which basically means that like, you run more traffic up and down the roads, right? They will do that for the um, high-speed internet side as well. They hadn't given that up yet, but they were decided to make that ruling. They're going to reconsider it. It's going to happen. My prediction is it's going to happen. It's going to happen the first half of 2026. When that does, then the speed of high speed internet to the, the dishes will go up by about, you know, five, 10 times. So that's also going to happen. I just think the Death Star of like how much power is coming out. Obviously, it's an exaggeration, just to kind of like illustrate what's going on here. They have mobile Starlink. So even though you can also go to your phone, if I want even more speed, high speed internet speed, I can get a dish, which I could. You know, they have it up here, a little rowboat. It could be your backpack. You know, you can <clears throat> set it up anywhere in your ca a car or something like that. This can all work. And then you'll be getting high-speed internet. Not say phone internet, but even faster high-speed internet uh, to your dish. And you can do it for business services um, and also, again, showing it on, a, on the back of a Cybertruck. So, again, unique capabilities that other uh, satellite uh, communication providers do not have in terms of the mobile aspect of sticking on a car. Or it, it is it's very difficult. I think they have it on some semi-trucks, lower speed, but at high speed, 
um, this is pretty unique. And also because the Starlink Sally is so much closer, the, the latency, the time to get the signals up and down is way, way better. Down at 20 milliseconds versus 600 milliseconds, like almost more than half a second for the guys who have satellites really far away. For the Gen 3 satellites, these things are massive, okay? They weigh almost two tons, so about the size weight of a car, which is only a few hundred kilograms for the small satellites. And compared to the space station, if you were to lay like eight side by side, they almost would have the area of the space station and also have a football field down below to show how big these things are, okay? Huger, there's thousands of beams, little transponders giving out more connection. A huge number of transponders on these things. So what does that mean? So SpaceX Starlink already has over 7 million customers. This is just for the high-speed internet side of things. They have some number, million, few million T-Mobile customers who get uh, texting anywhere, paying $10 per month. I'm guessing $5 per month goes to SpaceX for that. In October, they'll have voice, uh, they're getting data. Maybe a bit after that, they'll have voice uh, from these uh, um, um, satellite communications direct to your cell phone, okay? They should have 25 to 50 million customers by the end of next year. Could go faster. The fact that they have so much more, have so much more bandwidth next year with this new ruling uh, in, the, in the purchase, um, the, the number of customers they have is limited by how fast they can roll out. The, the, these are the high-speed internet. How fast they can roll high-speed internet. How much they get on the phone side um, depend upon having more of the V3 satellites up and in order to get this, the new bandwidth. They need to get new satellites up in order to fully leverage the new S-band thing that they have, as well as they have to get new phones to people to use S-band. S-band does not work to existing phones. So either Apple and the other phone makers need to adjust and say, okay, we'll make S-band phone that will work with, with Starlink, or um, SpaceX will need, need to make their own phones, I, either one, okay? But they can already use the 10 megahertz um, stuff they have with T-Mobile, that works already. They could do other deals, they can get other, other things on there. But they're in a certain amount of time, a few months, a few years, they will have the deals in place where they will be able to go to all phones. Um, their valuation is already $400 billion. This will easily take them up to $2 trillion. Um, SpaceX strong in 2028, 2032. I'm estimating 200 million high-speed internet users at 2 gigabits per second. Um, could be more. Um, and then 5 billion direct to cell phone at 5G. So if you assume a linear ramp up in market share from 0% now-ish, to 60% of all cell phones, um, and then staying there at 60%. SpaceX revenues from direct to cell phone market, you know, based on the, the global uh, GSM market report, should be about just shy of $400 billion by 2028, 40% market share, again, depends upon deals, rollouts, all that kind of stuff. SpaceX will retain 100% of revenue from its independent operations. They will now have the capability, once they get phones that can handle S-band, um, and then getting the version three satellites to do everything by themselves. They don't need to have partner with anyone else if they don't, if they choose not to, or for geopolitical reasons, you know, they, they you know, make that happen where they go, okay, you know, Europe's going to get really pissed off if we cut out, um, you know, uh, Deutsche Telekom or something. And then by 2030, $600 billion in revenue, I think it towards 60%. And then towards seven hundred million dollars, twenty thirty-five. Assuming things kind of cap out, I'm assuming that forty percent will have to be given away in deals and other stuff with other other phone companies to not kill them. But the fact that they go down to forty percent, they will save. Other phone companies will save huge amounts because they do not need their most of their cell towers. Eighty percent of the cell towers go away. They only keep twenty percent or so that are in the cities, or thirty percent some some number, and then the rest will be served because, hey, I'm giving you some, some bandwidth. I'm giving you uh, other things. So, you know, you're going to save me billions of dollars on, on my cell tower maintenance. And now um, we'll partner to have no dead zones and all this communication. So there's this um, back, um, 
infrastructure thing that, that SpaceX is going to take out and remove the need for. It, it, so it also means that the cell tower companies will go down. They will start, they will start um, losing a lot of money because it'd be such a lower need for cell towers. So then typically all of this will be very, very monthly profit, you know, like 90% profit margin is just insane because, you know, you know, the cost of launch is so low, the cost of manufacturing is so low. And once they pass, you know, $10, $20 billion per year, they'll be profitable. And then their cost of they go up because they can just reuse the infrastructure. So then $600 billion of profit times 40 PE, price of earnings multiple, you know, you're looking at $24 billion. So, you know, 50 to $30 trillion in valuation, which um, there was also the Elon pay package for Tesla side of things where that could go to a $20 trillion company if they're making $400 billion of profit. So combined, $400 billion of, of adjusted EBITDA from Tesla, $600 billion of adjusted EBITDA from SpaceX, um, Elon could have a trillion dollar worth of adjusted EBITDA in his two main companies, not including XAI or Neuralink, et cetera. So this is just huge. But for us, it means 5G everywhere, no dead zones, um, really, really fantastic service everywhere, high-speed internet everywhere. So it's a great communications future for us, and most of it will be provided by SpaceX and Starlink. So basically, that is a summary of the huge news. Uh, thanks for listening. I can give you, give me more details about this, um, these rapid developments. Uh, thank you very much. Talk to me next time. Uh, like and subscribe really helps with the algorithm. If you can like earlier, that is better. Thank you.